Well, let's go to number 11. Uh, why is not everyone who hears the gospel brought to faith? Ooh, good question, right? Okay, put on your theological armor, because <laughs> I do have an answer for you. But two things. It's not going to satisfy your intellect. I've told you that already. I've warned you. Okay, and it won't answer everything. But it is what the Bible says. And after I'm done, all I can do is rely on the power of the Holy Spirit, working through the Word, that you'll believe what the Bible says. Okay. Before we look at the passages, we can tell you about people being saved and people being damned. Okay? There's only logically three positions you can come to on this. Okay? One is if people are saved, it's God's doing. And if people are damned, it's God's doing. Okay? Another one can be if people are saved, it's man's doing, getting better, because they have free will. They made a decision for Jesus. You with me? Okay. And likewise, if they're damned, it's man's what? Fault. Ah, oh, I got another one. It's the biblical one. If people are saved, it's because of God. And if people are lost, it's their own fault. Now we're going to look at the Bible passages, but let me watch here. These two are very logical. I'm not saying whether you like them or not. I'm just looking at logic. Just logic. Okay. It's this is law. If if people are, God saves people, then God, damn, that's logical, whether you like it or not. Okay? And that's what a man called Calvin taught. John Calvin, as well as others, but he's the most famous. Came out of the 16th century Reformation. Okay? Then there's man and man, and this was taught by a man named Jacob Arminius, who was a Dutchman in the 16th and early 17th century, who revolted against Calvin's theology. Okay? And in America today, this is the popular teaching. This is the teaching, and I'm being overly simplistic to make my point. This is the teaching of the evangelical Protestant world. John Hagee, all those people on television, okay? Jerry Falwell, okay? John Wesley taught this. This is where you have to make a decision for Jesus. And if you make a decision for Jesus, well, that's great. And if you don't make a decision for Jesus, it's your fault. Okay. Now we're going to get to the passages just in a minute. The Bible teaches, if you're saved, God gets all the credit. For thine is the power, kingdom and the power and the glory. If you're not saved, it's your own fault. Now, that's what the Bible teaches. But the dilemma is that you and I have intellectually, it's not logical, is it? And I know that. Yeah, the church that teaches this, we know this isn't logical. It's not logical. Because you say, now wait a minute, if God, if God gives you faith in Jesus, and these people don't have faith in Jesus, doesn't make sense, does it? Well, let's look at the Bible passages, then we'll do a little bit more and start wrapping it up so you're not too late. Here we go, let's look at the Bible. Oh, by the way, uh, and this is, uh, this is the teaching of the Lutheran church. Okay, let's look at the Bible passages, number 11. 1 Timothy 2, 4. God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Well, what does that passage say about this point? Is that what that... Does, does, does that passage say that God damns people? Pre, no, no. He says what? God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Truth. By the way, John Calvin also taught, also taught Jesus didn't die for everybody. John Calvin taught Jesus died only for those who are actually going to be saved. Well, if John Calvin, if Jesus didn't die for everybody, how do you know he died for you? Big problem here, isn't there? Okay. So 
God desires all men to be saved. So if anybody's lost, it's not because God wants them to be lost. He wants them to be saved. Matthew 23, 37. This is Jesus speaking. And I can't imagine he didn't have tears in his eyes when he said this. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you. And that means, if you, I don't know if you know your Old Testament. He's referring to the Old Testament prophets. Because the people of God in the Old Testament often rebelled against God, were unfaithful to God, and that's why all the Old Testament prophets came to try to bring them back to the faith and bring them back to the truth. And they often persecuted and killed the Old Testament prophets. That's what Jesus is talking about. Now look what he says. How often, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brooding wings and God wouldn't let you. Oh, no, that's not what it says, does it? He doesn't blame God for their unbelief. Who does he blame? Them. Jesus wanted them to believe in him. I'm the long promised seed of the woman. I'm the Messiah, the Christ. Please believe in me. But they wouldn't. I don't hear any blame of God, right? They didn't, they didn't believe because this part is right. They didn't believe because of themselves. Ah, oh, now watch this one. This is a good one. Acts 7, 51. I'll read it and then I'll explain it. You always resist the Holy Spirit. This is spoken by the very first Christian martyr, Stephen, in Acts chapter 7. As far as we know, in recorded history, the first person to be killed simply because he was a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay? And he was stoned to death for a sermon he gave to the Pharisees. And in the sermon, this is one of the things he says, and he's talking to the religious leaders, the Pharisees, who did not believe in Jesus. Ah! And why didn't they believe in Jesus? What does it say? Because they resisted the Holy Spirit. Ah, now let's think this through. The gospel, right? Let's pretend like these are the Pharisees that didn't believe in Jesus. Okay, here comes the word, right, that Jesus spoke to them and Stephen spoke to them. And who's working in the word? The Holy Spirit. And so it comes in Jesus. And to resist the Holy Spirit can only mean when these Pharisees heard the gospel about Jesus, the Holy Spirit wanted them to what? believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit wanted to give them faith in Jesus, and they said, no thanks. So it's not God's fault, it's their fault. Now let me explain this to you. When God works in His raw power, nobody can resist Him. Like on the judgment day, and He's going to send some people to hell, nobody's going to say, I don't want to go. <laughs> When God works in His raw power, nobody can withstand Him. Now listen carefully. However, when God works through means, word, okay, He can be resisted. For example, God gives us physical life, right? And who is it that keeps us alive according to the Bible? God does. But God keeps us alive with physical means, food, water, etc. Now, can I defy God who gives me life and take that life away? Sure, right? Yeah. Does God want me to do this? But I can resist God and do it anyway. Can't, that's the way it works in the spirit realm too. Now here's what we're trying to say, and then I'll, I'll, we'll take some questions here and then we'll move on very quickly. This does not make sense. But it's, you've seen the Bible passages. With anybody who has faith in Jesus Christ, God gets all the credit. If somebody doesn't have faith in Jesus Christ, that's not God's fault. That's the individual's fault. Now, I realize as much as you do the intellectual problems with that. And you can think about it all you want. Just make sure you have a Tylenol bottle you know, next to you. And, but if you start giving answers, if you start giving answers that are against the Bible, you're going to fall in one of two errors. You'll fall into the air of John Calvin, who says that salvation is by grace, but it's not universal. Salvation is not for everybody. Or, if you try to answer this question, you'll become a, a follower of Arminius, which is today's American Protestant denominationalism, and you'll get into decision theology. 
which answers the question, you know, well, why does he believe and he didn't? Well, he made a decision for Jesus. Well, that gives credit to man. So you've answered the question and you've resolved your logic, but it's not biblical. You've denied original sin. So if you try to answer this question, you're going to either become a Calvinist or an Arminianist. You're either going to deny universal grace or you're going to deny by grace alone. See, Lutherans believe in both universal grace, God wants everybody to be saved, and by grace alone that it's God's doing. And Lutherans just let it sit there because there's many things we do not understand, okay? but we have to be faithful to the word of God. 